<laughs> ain't no half stepping, Marcus J. These guys is in here having a party. This is ain't no half stepping. Today we are celebrating our six month anniversary. Break. We just up in here getting it in, laughing and clowning and 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 straight up wilding out. I got Big Rube, Carlton Banks, and on the live line I got our normal uh, NBA analyst K Dub. Along with a friend of ours, Rashawn McLeod, is going to join us uh, to talk a little bit about the National Basketball Association. So, what's up, fellas? What's going on? I'm good, man. I'm good, man. I'm good. Yo, this is the six month anniversary. You know, like, what y'all get with this? Like, rubber bands? Or I know, man. Get, like, I... um, y'all get, a, y'all get the uh, little keychain, the, um, the latch key keychain or something to recognize your six month anniversary. Or I was I was going to get him oh, some of the oh, lint oh, out of my pocket. To get the white castle. <laughs> Word. That's what's up, man. I was, White Castle. Huh? I was I was going to get him some of the lint out of my pocket, but I didn't have enough to give to both of them. So I was like, Nah, I'm not going to do one and not do the other. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you know, I like I, the white. I like the three dollars to get the White Castle. They get you like three burgers and a, and a drink. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up, man. Hey, and it also gets you right for the night. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Empty out that colon, <laughs> whatnot. So K Dub, let's jump right into it, brother. K Dub. It's a whole lot of three to ones and four and O's going on right now in the National Basketball Association. And my question, my first question to you is, what the heck happened with the champions, man? What what happened? Um, in my opinion, I think that they did a lot. Uh, they did a lot to try to clean house and open up cap space because they were thinking about next year having the opportunity to possibly go after Dwight Howard, go after uh, hometown uh, hometown hero Darren Williams. And by doing that, it gutted what was the core of their team of last year. Every, everyone from uh, Deshaun St- uh, Stevenson to Tyson Chandler to uh, Barrera. And those were the guys, those were the key guys that basically made that engine run in, in, in Dallas last year. So... You take those guys out of the equation, you're pretty much dealing with the same type of Dallas team that you had two years ago or three years ago. You know, it's crazy because I think this might have been one of the first times, well, not in history, I think it has happened, but certainly the first time in recent memory that the defending champion gets back to the playoffs and doesn't win a game at all. I mean, that, you know, that, that, that right there, that's kind of a black guy on Dirk, is it not? Well, um, I wouldn't necessarily uh, put a black eye on Dirk, like I, I stated, you know, in regards to the other pieces that were um, that were taken away from the team. I, I would say that if if anything, it would it would be a, a disservice to the um, to the fans, you know, expecting uh, them to co- to somewhat repeat or come close, and then they just go into the they go into the first round and stink the stink the joint up. You know, um, but you know, all in all, you got to look at the team that, that that they were playing. They were playing the Oklahoma City Thunder. They were the number two team in the West uh, behind San Antonio. I mean, they played a real talented team. Let's not take anything away from Oklahoma City. But you would think that the defending champions would at least get a game. Do you think their age played a good factor in there? Uh, I wouldn't. Um, no. I, w- I wouldn't say that because if age played a factor, you know, look at teams like San Antonio, you know. Uh, Rashawn, what, what, what do you think played a factor in the, in the uh, with Dallas not really uh, <laughs> coming back with a good showing this year? Uh, it was matchups. I mean, you know, that, that was kind of one of those things where Oklahoma City was just a better team. You know, when you say defending champions, you use that term loosely because it wasn't the same team that won the championship. Um, you know, granted, they had the full guys of Dirk and, and Jason Terry and uh, Sean Marion, guys like that. But you know, uh, what 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 they struggle with is their role players. You know, the guys like Brendan Hayward, who happened to fill a role in Tyson Chandler. You know, guys like that. And I mean, granted, you pick up a guy like Lamar Odom, who if he had been playing and playing the way we know Lamar Odom can play. Uh, that might have been a big difference. I mean, I'm not saying they would have won the series, but at least would have been more competitive. We talked about him. Yeah, and I mean, pretty much, I, I agree that definitely this is probably the worst matchup of the whole playoffs, I would say, because there's just no way that Dallas remotely had the firepower or the defense 
to keep up with Oklahoma City. I mean, they played it close a couple times, but in all reality, there was no way that they were going to beat Oklahoma City. I'm actually shocked they didn't win a game, but being, seeing, seeing them swept did not surprise me. Uh, well, also, too, I think that, you know, with the condensed season and so many games playing, teams running out of gas. I mean, I mean, guys are older. You know, I mean, the reason that San Antonio Spurs can – can rest their their main guys is because their, their their role players are good. I mean, so you look at guys like Tim Duncan, Ginobili, and and, and Tony Parker being able to rest their their their, their big three uh, because you got guys like Danny Green and Kiwi Leonard and guys that come off the bench that will allow and will not you know the level of play won't drop as much as it has when you take out Dirk Nowitzki from the from the uh, from the Dallas Mavericks. Uh, team, when you put, when you rest him, you know, and you rest a guy like Jason Terry, where do you get scoring from? And that's been really the biggest issue that they had. Okay. Most teams that are really good have three big time scores, and uh, and Dallas only really has one. And Jason Terry's, is, uh, you know, he's a six man, so uh, he's playing against the other teams' second unit. He's not really, even though he's an integral part of that team, he's still not one of the big three. It's really a big one in Dirk Nowitzki. Well, let me let me bring in this factor. You saw that San Antonio brought um, is taking care of Utah right now. You think Manu, the resurgence of Manu coming back later in the season, having that early injury, helped them out? Of course. I mean, it, you know, he got a chance to rest, um, and and he's you know he he's very very skilled. I mean, he's one of those players that he doesn't need a lot. Of, of, of recovery time when he gets back on the floor. I mean, because he doesn't take bad shots. He makes big shots. So he's not a high volume. They don't have a, a bunch of high volume shooters on their team in San Antonio. They got a the system is designed that if you run the system there, you know, you don't have to get in. You just have to learn. You have to know their system. And it's one of the very, very few system teams in the league uh, because they can plug in guys as long as they buy into the system, they'll have success. Hey, Dub. Hey, Dub. What's, 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 what's going on with Memphis and the Clippers, bro? Memphis and the Clippers, uh, like I said last week, man, I said that this would be one of the that. matchups that, I, that we would still be talking about. Uh, right now, the Clippers are winning the series 3-1, to one, but if anybody has watched any of those games, they've all been very entertaining all the way up until last night's overtime game. Um... With the Clippers, you're seeing you're seeing something that you haven't seen before. Nobody has seen the Clippers going on, you know, going to the playoffs and actually make a good run of it right now. They're, I won't say that they're handling Memphis, but they're sitting at three and one, and you know, coming up on Game Five, which would be tomorrow night, they could end it. And, and I would have thought that you know Memphis would be would I, I would I would have thought that the series would be at least at this point even. But the Clippers behind, uh, man, Chris Paul. Chris Paul is, uh, he's the guy. He's running L.A. You know, the way that we talk about Kobe, man, there's no he right now. <clears throat> he's making the Clippers go. You know, just his sheer determination allowed them to win, uh, I want to say it was game one in Memphis. Uh, they were down a okay, number of points. Exactly, exactly. You've never seen that in a playoff game, you know, and they and just you know, the coach from what I understand the coach was ready to kinda, you know, put up the white flag and just his sheer determination behind him and Reggie Evans. Reggie Evans was the I would say the player of that game. He didn't necessarily score a lot. If I'm not mistaken, he might have had three to four points, but just his presence being on the floor, playing defense, doing a lot of the little things that help teams win playoff games, you know, he turned that game around. You know, you look at that game and you look at last night's game that went into overtime, the, the series could easily, easily be 3-1 Memphis or it could be 2-2. Yeah, I mean, that. I watched the game last night. And first of all, in overtime, Chris Paul was sick. That dude went insane. He made literally almost every shot he threw up. I mean, how are you going to sit there and float from one side of the, from the top of the, from the top of the free throw line all the way near the end? near the end line and makes a shot. I mean, not like bouncing around, swish. That that shot was incredible. Hey, I'm going to jump here, but I'm going to end up over here and I'm going to make this shot. And I'm just like, really? He this has, dude's on a different level. He has the light. He's the coach on the floor. Uh, you know, the coach has, has, has trusted him with the, with, the, with the, you know, with the keys. 
Yeah. You know, he's a difference in the series. I mean, exactly. Chris Paul is is is, is a pure point guard, one of very few point guard, pure point guards in the league, traditional pure point guard. And granted, the, that's the difference. Memphis doesn't have a player that can go out and just control the game. I think they have players that are right on the cusp of becoming that at some point with the talent that they possess. But Chris Paul is a general, and he's got, they have an equal amount of talent, in my opinion, but when you have that general, that floor leader that makes and elevates everybody else's game, because as, as decent as uh, Blake Griffin has been playing, he is not, he still looks like a deer in the headlight, you know, yeah. but when you got a general like Chris Paul that can elevate his game offensively, because defensively, uh, we still need to see more. If, if Blake Griffin had his mark on this game the way that we know that he can with the talent he possessed, the games wouldn't be that close. Uh, you know, having 30 the other night, last night I think it was, you take away 10 of those points and give him 20 and, and you know, elevate his rebounds from 4 to 12. Now I think the, 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 the Clippers will win by 14 as opposed to it going into overtime. Uh, because they need, that's and that's where Reggie Evans became such a big help. But it's a big difference between Blake Griffin doing it in the valuable minute and Reggie Evans doing it. Are we going to see a Game 7 in this Clippers-Memphis series? Because I just got, I had this feeling that Memphis is not going to, I know we're going to see a Game 6 because Memphis is not going to lose this at home. I can't see it. Are we going to see a Game 7 on Sunday between these two teams? As long uh, as there are no injuries. I don't see there being a game six. Wow. You know, I don't, I don't, I think the Clippers and, you know, it is the paper clips it's from recent, you know, from past, uh, past years, but wow. it's, a, it's a whole core group of guys that, you know, Chris Paul has playoff experience. Karan Butler has playoff experience, uh, you know, and then you have young talent and Nick Young. And, I mean, they, they have a very good makeup uh, of guys with, athleticism and slashing and floor general and shooters and I mean they just have a great core and they have that veteran leadership that Memphis is missing. Memphis doesn't have anybody that can just take over the game. They play well together. They have experience in the playoffs with what they did last year uh, against the Spurs but they just don't have that one guy when things get really tough and I think O.J. Mayo is on the borderline of being that guy yeah. but he's not there yet. Now, do you think, uh, Rashawn, do you think that there's a lot of pressure on Rudy Gay to be that guy? If you look at a lot, I noticed uh, basically that a lot of the end-of-game plays, you know, uh, it, it is falls on Rudy Gay. Do you think that, you know, uh, he's ready for that pressure? Do you feel that there is some pressure being put on him to be that guy? Well, this, these are the moments that make you great. And uh, I think Rudy Gay is one of the most talented small forward within the NBA. But, you know, without these moments and him coming through, he'll never be able to cross the threshold to be to be called that. Uh, and so, you know, in order for him to one day have a chance to be great, he's going to have to be more successful in these moments where end-of-the-game situations he's handling it. Uh, you know, there will be no Jordan. There will be no Kobe. There will be no Magic or Bird without those moments. They were the most talented guys. They were also the guys that came through in the clutch. Uh, you know, that... that there's always the, the, the deciding factor on who the best players in the league are when you look at guys like Durant and Westbrook and uh, Dwayne Wade and, uh, you know, those guys thrive for those moments. Uh, yes, Kobe Bryant and, uh, and, and Derrick Rose. I mean, when their team needs those plays, they are there to make them. And I, I just don't see Memphis having that one guy yet that can 